Today, I wanna to take a deep dive into what diammonium phosphate is and how you use it in your brewing. So let's get started. If you've done any research on brewing, bead making specifically in this instance, you've ran across yeast nutrient and the necessities of it. You've also probably heard about diammonium phosphate or DAP as we also call it. There are a multitude of ways to give your yeast nutrient, including diammonium phosphate, DAP, Fermate O, Fermate K, yeast holes. Uh, there's other ones on the market too, but those are the big ones there. Diammonium phosphate is one of those that has been kind of heavily debated on how helpful it is sometimes. Some people have some uh, pretty bad prejudice against it because of certain things they've heard or read, and other people don't mind it at all. I recently did a yeast nutrient test in mead making and had some really interesting results. I'll tag a video below for that, but I essentially tested all of these with mead. Specifically, diammonium phosphate is one of these that comes in this granulated form. It's this white crystal looking thing. Now this right here is really helpful for adding straight nitrogen to a brew. Diammonium phosphate is literal, just straight nitrogen as a source. It's often used in agricultural use to put into soil, to raise pH and those things. And they figured out, well, guess what? Because yeast need nitrogen, and this is a great nitrogen source, why don't we use it in home brewing? So it's been around for a long time. You can see all these different places it's been used, but specifically in home brewing, people use it in beer making and wine making and mead making, cider, anything that requires your yeast to have more nitrogen than a normal amount. In beer making, wort, which is the grain and the water mixture after the mash, often has enough nitrogen to get your brew to be healthy, that your yeast are able to use that nitrogen. Now, sometimes they actually have to add more nitrogen into it if it's a you know, heavy brew, a stout, or something where those yeast might need a little extra help. There's a thing called GAN, which is yeast assimilable nitrogen, and there is a parts per million that we generally try to stay within. Now, as a basic home brewer, you're not gonna be calculating super well the parts per million in your brew, but you can use calculators to figure out how much you wanna add roughly. In mead making, we use this a lot because honey is very low in nitrogen, and this is a great source of nitrogen. Now, there are different ways to get the nitrogen. It could be organic, Fermate O. It could be Fermate K which is a combination of organic. And regardless of how you choose it, dimonium phosphate is a very good source of adding nitrogen. Now, here's a bit more information about it. Like I said earlier, there's some misconceptions or just comments on about it that have stated, hey, it's good for these reasons or bad for these reasons. And I wanna talk about that. So when you're buying dimonium phosphate, you wanna look and see what is in your dimonium phosphate. Is it True, dimonium phosphate, or is it DAP plus urea? Urea is another nitrogen source, and sometimes people will sell dimonium phosphate that has some urea in it. Now here's the problem with that. Urea is not helpful to a brew if it doesn't get consumed by the yeast. It actually adds off flavors. So that's kind of a difficulty there. You wanna make sure that when you're using dimonium phosphate that has urea, that you do not put too much in there because if it's not consumed by the yeast, it will add some saltiness. It'll add some off flavors to your brew that you don't want. There was a Reddit article a couple years ago about a guy who separated out, he bought a bag of dimonium phosphate and urea those combined and he separated out the crystals somehow because I think they're different enough and it was like a 50-50 blend. Essentially, the commentary was about the seller and saying, hey, what the heck? Because <laughs> we don't want to use this. So I prefer to get pure dimonium phosphate. Now on that note, dimonium phosphate is one of those that I have myself have said some, some things about that I didn't fully understand. I needed to do a bigger deep dive and I made a comment once or twice about how it was not good to use at the beginning of fermentation. And I was misguided because I read something wrong and then I just ran with it. Rather than dive a little deeper, I just ran with it and I said something kind of stupid. So I wanna correct my statement here and say, dimonium phosphate is perfectly okay to use in the beginning of fermentation. All right, I wanna jump in because I've done even more research and I can explain this better than old Garrett did. So talking about beer, 
specifically, high gravity beers, when you add your yeast nutrient, your dimonium phosphate in the beginning, I mean that you're adding it not with the rehydration of the yeast. That means when you use a dried yeast, it's normally freeze dried or some form of that. So the process of rehydrating them is their cell walls being built back up and essentially becoming strong again. When you include, or if you included dimonium phosphate in the rehydration process, it's actually not helpful to this brew, to those yeast specifically. And I have some sources, I've been kind of nerding out about this in the white pages of some places. So I'll include my sources here, but here's why we don't use specifically DAP in rehydration. This says, Yan, yeast assimilable nitrogen, is composed of inorganic ammonium ion and organic primary amino acid nitrogen components. Amino acids are brought into the yeast cell through transport across the cell membrane. The presence of alcohol and ammonium ions, dimonium phosphate, inhibit amino acids from being brought into the cell. This is why winemakers are advised to not add DAP at inoculation or at the beginning of fermentation as yeast can actively absorb organic nitrogen in the juice or later on essentially. So that's saying that beginning point, it's actually harmful to the yeast and it inhibits the whole reproduction process and the process they need to go through in order to be healthy and start fermenting. Their suggestion there is to use it after the yeast have gone through the budding process, after they've been rehydrated, then add it. This is because that or inorganic nitrogen source there can be pulled into the cells after the fact, or as they say, aqueous from the juice, the aqueous environment. They can pull it from the must in our circumstance. So when you introduce it, most importantly, make sure you do this when using especially dried yeast, uh, that you are adding it after rehydration and the yeast have had their time. So this is probably within 12 hours, not like zero or hour zero of the fermentation. That covers beer, that covers high gravity beers, all of those things. Also mead. So if you're introducing it, as we just talked about, make sure you caution yourself on when to add dimonium phosphate so you don't inhibit a quality fermentation or add any difficulties in the fermentation process for your yeast. So one of the reasons I'm doing this video is because I had heard the gist of that, but I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why you shouldn't add dimonium phosphate in the beginning. I just thought it was bad and it would explode the cell walls and blah, blah, blah. And after some more research, that is what's happening. So you still don't wanna use dimonium phosphate at rehydration, but you can use it early on. Now there's two sides of dimonium phosphate. You can use it in the beginning, not rehydration, post rehydration, beginning of fermentation kind of moment. Then you also have to caution yourself on when to use it later. I'm gonna get into some more white pages to talk about this, but there has been something that is said a while back about not using dimonium phosphate past 9% ABV. It's something that's permeated on the internet recently, and I didn't really understand why. I just kind of believed it, and I still do believe it, especially now that I have the information. So dimonium phosphate is an inorganic yeast nutrient. Yeast, as they're consuming sugars, creating alcohol, and the alcohol presence increases, they have a harder time getting inorganic yeast nutrient into their cells to be able to use in that fermentation. So as that ABV is going up, if you've added a lot of dimonium phosphate, more than what they need to get past 9% ABV, there's a likelihood they'll use some of it. They might use it past like 9.5%. They're not stopping at a dead 9% exactly, but it gets harder for them to use dimonium phosphate in their process. So because that's true, then if they don't use it, it is just a flavor or an ingredient found in your mead at that point. And dimonium phosphate in excess can add off flavors as we've talked about. So that's why you don't use specifically dimonium phosphate past 9% ABV. If you're going to use it in your fermentation, what you need to do is you need to add it, you know, let's say 10 to 12 hours after the fermentation has started because the yeast have really picked up started the fermentation process, their cells are built up so they can handle uh, that nutrient coming in. You want to make sure and use a calculator to figure out how much to add, and more than likely, in fact, it's highly encouraged, especially with all these other white pages I've read, that you want to use a 
yeast nutrient source that has more complex macro or micronutrients, being something like Fermate O or Fermate K. Those two have the more complex things that your yeast need to go further in their fermentation. So the inorganic side, the dimonium phosphate, which is also found in Fermate K, that will not be used as well past 9% ABV. So if you wanted to push your brew past 9%, you're gonna to wanna to make sure and use a organic yeast nutrient source, Fermate O. So often these yeast calculators, the nutrient calculators, will suggest that you use dimonium phosphate in the beginning and then you switch over to Fermate O or Fermate K or something like that. I love Fermate O, I think it's a great one. You can still go overboard with Fermate O, that's an important fact to say here, but the conjunction of the two will lead to a healthy fermentation. Dimonium phosphate by itself can lead to a fermentation that's pretty healthy, but I do think it runs the risk of more off flavors. On that note, you can also, with too much dimonium phosphate, you can increase that amount of nitrogen in there, which in turn, if it's not used, if there's any bad bacteria that gets in there that's strong enough to fight through an alcohol tolerance, they'll go straight for that nitrogen and they'll ferment with it. So they'll reproduce, they'll bud based off of the extra nitrogen because it's just like candy to them. So you don't want that. You don't want a bad bacteria getting in there and getting hold of the nitrogen that you have or leftover nitrogen. So use a calculator, that's how you can combat that. All right, so we've talked a lot about this. Dimonium phosphate is very, very, very useful for fermentation. You just need to know when to use it. I highly encourage you to get some. Use it in the beginning of your fermentation. Don't be afraid to use it. Make sure you use a calculator so you know how much to add at each time. And I hope that this video has shined some light on some things you might have heard. I will include every source that I have pulled from, from Reddit pages to this WordPress one that I found by this awesome person, and other sources down below if you'd like to read even further about these. The, the most important thing, Denise M. Gardner, who wrote this big white page that I'm reading right here, she says, our understanding of yan is still developing. And I think that's true to this day. This was done in like 2015, 2016. We're still learning about it now. Are we gonna find more information about how yeast assimilable, assimilate their nitrogen sources into brewing? Absolutely. I hope this has been helpful for at least shining some light on those things. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel, and the research I'm doing, uh, hit the subscribe button, of course. So there's a Patreon, there's a YouTube membership. Here are my awesome patrons and YouTube members that help me keep this channel running because ad revenue does not <laughs> pay the bills. So thank you to all those people. I hope you'll come back for more content in the future. Cheers.